Hey everyone, if you enjoy this free content, please consider subscribing. Thanks, enjoy the video. One of the most important things that we realize is that fish often sit quite tight close to shore. Nothing used to frustrate me more when I was guiding than the angler who goes out and tries to cast 100 feet right away. Realistically, all you want to do on your first run through or on your first cast is just cast out the leader, then maybe half of your tip, and incrementally increase your distance until you're casting as far as you can, and only then should you start stepping down. Now, a lot of the flies, especially flies with marabou and bunny rabbit, they take a little bit of time to get wet. So just make sure that your fly is submerged and it's really allowing that water to soak in. Otherwise, your first few casts can see your fly sitting on top of the water, even though it's not supposed to be. So now that I can see that my fly is fully wet, it's really getting down where it's supposed to be, I'm gonna go ahead and begin to make my first cast. Now, it's not that impressive. It literally looks like this. <laughs> not that hard, is it? And again, pointing the rod at the fly, we're going to allow it to swing into shore, otherwise known as the dangle. And now we're gonna incrementally let out maybe four feet at a time. Slowly covering the water. Just a little bit, don't look at the casting, because like I said, it's nothing impressive right now. Just slowly getting our fly out where the fish are. We won't really start our proper casting until the fly line head is out of our rod tip and we can properly load the rod. Because the water is quite clear, I'm taking three or four steps between every cast. There's several different schools of thought here. Some people like to wait till they've hit the dangle and then step and retrieve. I like to wait until my fly is right in the gut or the money zone and then just casually taking a few steps, maintaining that tension as I'm walking. So that allows my fly and myself to travel those few steps whilst keeping it in that deep trophy water where the fish are. And then from there, I go ahead and start my retrieve. Now, rather than just stripping all my running line with big, aggressive strips, I'm just gonna do a couple trouty strips just in case there's one that's been following my fly in. After I'm confident that there's nothing chasing my fly, then I'm gonna go back to my big aggressive strips and get ready for my cast. So I'll put that all into real time for you. Notice that I'm going to just simply move my rod tip upstream. I didn't throw an enormous mend and disrupt all that line. I just simply took my rod tip, moved it upstream. I'm going to take three or four steps down, really sinking that fly into that gut, covering all of that water. If there's a fish there, it sees me allowing my fly to swing into the dangle and only after I'm sure will I give it a couple of trout strips. When I'm sure that nothing's on it, then I'll prepare for my cast. But you'll notice that I'm not now just stepping downstream just because I'm stripping, because I'm doing the steps in between the swing. And this is variable. If we had a really shallow bank, obviously we would strip as we step down so that we didn't snag up on the bottom. In spay casting, it's really important. If your line is not long enough to be cast on your rod, you'll do what we call popping your anchor. So you can do a number of things. You can get a longer line, you can fish a longer tip, or you can simply lengthen your leader. There's all sorts of different tricks that you can use. Because I'm not fishing a very heavy sink tip, I'm gonna go ahead and just simply lengthen my leader. It's still not gonna be very long. I typically don't fish more than three or four feet on any sort of sink tip. In this case, I'm gonna fish probably maybe five and a half, six feet long. And again, it is because it's a light tip. If I had a really heavy sink tip and a really long leader, there's always the likelihood that you can have your sink tip here with your fly up here and you can accidentally floss or snag your fish. And we don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna do a very simple surgeon's knot. We're going to take each tag end lay them over top of each other, make sure we don't have too much overlap, and then just create a basic overhand loop like so. It's just like creating a ring. So I'm gonna do that three times. So that's the first. Now I'm gonna go back around for the second, and I'm gonna come back around for the third on the triple surgeons. 
before you pull this taut, you're just going to want to make sure that you get a little bit of saliva on that so that you don't have any sort of stickiness. Take both ends. And really all we're trying to do is make it so that it's tight from the get-go. Knots break when they slide. So you want to make sure that all of the sliding is done beforehand. And then you're going to clip your tag ends. We're almost ready to go. At this point now, we're going to go ahead and attach our fly. There are all sorts of different knots that you can use. I prefer just a standard, very basic loop knot. And honestly, I use this knot for tarpon. I use this knot for brown trout. I use it for steelhead salmon. I kind of use it for everything. We're going to make a standard overhand loop, like so. And then we're just going to go ahead and take this tag end, put it through the eye of our hook. It really doesn't matter how you put it in. I like to kind of dangle it at this point. And then with my fingers, I cover the loops and the head of the fly. And I like to usually wrap it around five times or so. Not too picky. Again, make sure that the coiling is wet and put the tag back through both of those loops like so. Grab it with your teeth, pull till it's just caught and just tight enough to get started. And then from here, you're gonna pull the fly and the main line in either direction. Don't start pulling around on the tag end just yet. So you'll see I pull, push down, pull, push down, pull, push down. And then it's never a bad idea just to take a zipper or something that you can hook onto and pull again, push down. This way, if you do slip, you won't end up impaling yourself. And if you do, it's all right because you pinched your barb. Cut your tag end, we're ready to go. Now that we're ready to go fishing, we're just going to take our fly, hook it onto one of the guides, wrap it down and around your reel, Rather than wrapping it down and around your reel this way, where the foot of the reel can end up actually giving you a little bit of a hinge or a mark, you want to just wrap it around the wide way. It's just a, a wider loop so you don't end up with any sort of imprint. And then when you get to the river, all you need to do is take your leader, drop it down, tap your rod, and go ahead and begin your fishing.